Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to St. Mark AME Church. We praise God that you could join us again online this morning, and we are grateful and thankful for these uh, new avenues of reaching out to God's people. Um, as um, the physical sanctuary is still closed, we know that the Church of God is not the building that is in us. So we praise God for allowing you to be with us today, and we pray that the message today will uh, help or enlighten your life in some way that not only you, but that you may be able to share with others uh, in your family, in your community, or even in your workplace. Uh, let us get started with a word of prayer as we open up the altar this morning for prayer. Eternal God, we thank you that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And God, we know that we have seen troubled times, and we know that you are a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. So God, we pray that you will be with us. We pray, God, uh, for our St. Mark Church family and our friends, God, who are listening to this message, God, all over the world. And we ask, oh God, that you be with them, God, whatever situation or circumstances that they have, oh God, in their family, oh God, and their loved ones, God. Please protect them, oh God. Protect those who are standing on the front line, God, our, our health care workers, oh God, who uh, uh, stand in need, oh God, of many things, oh God. Help them to be able to get the equipment and everything they need to be able to do their job, oh God. Thank you for their dedication, oh God, and their diligence and taking care of those who are sick, oh God, all over the world. God, we just thank you. We praise you, God, and we pray for everyone that's affected by not only this virus, God, but we pray for everyone that's going through right now, God, with the economic hardships, oh God, that many face. God, we just thank you and we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture text this morning will be coming from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through chapter 5, verse 2. And it reads as follows. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? And even the wind and the sea obey him. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him. Out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers of his holy word. Let us pray. God, we thank you today. We thank you for your blessings and we thank you for covering us, oh God. And God, as we come before your people this morning, we pray, God, that you will hide your servant behind that cross, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are so richly blessed um, in this country and many other countries. Um, we have things that a lot of people don't have, and God has continued to watch over us and to keep us safe, even in the midst of all that's going on. So today we want to talk about getting to the other side. Now, I know we have uh, different things in our life that we face, uh, and sometimes, you know, they're uncomfortable, and sometimes we don't want to have to go through them, and we just want to go ahead and get it over with. 
one of the things that uh, I always used to have uh, issues with is, is trying to buy a new vehicle. It seems like it doesn't take that long to find a vehicle that you want. But once you find the vehicle, the paperwork and sitting in the office seems to take forever. And you start out the process and you begin to say, when am I going to get through this? Or when am I going to get to the other side of this? You just don't want to go through uh, all the, the, the stuff that it takes and the waiting and the anticipation and things like that. And we tend to get impatient along the way. The, the longer we wait, uh, um, it seems like the more stress that comes on our life. That also happens sometimes. Uh, uh, nobody wants to go to the dentist on purpose, uh, but that is another place where we 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 just want to get to the other side of it. We don't want to. We want to go in. We want to get everything done, and we want to get out. In other words, we want to get to the other side as soon as possible. Now, here Jesus is. Uh, 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 just as he had finished uh, ministering to people and, and really the disciples really telling them about uh, uh, faith and, and, and how just a little mustard seed, you know, could bear so much, even though it's a tiny seed, it grows, grows into a strong uh, 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 plant that can sustain many things. And, and as he was telling them this, and as he moves into this, uh, Jesus d decided that he gets to this uh, uh, lake and he wants to go on the other side. And so they put Jesus in the boat and, and Jesus uh, finds a place in the boat that's comfortable in the back of the boat. And it says in the story that he has a, a pillow and, and, and Jesus goes to sleep. Now, it's amazing to me um, that all of that is going on. The storms comes up, the winds began to blow. And uh, this is an area where they were used to high winds and strong winds coming. Now, sailing, if you're sailing in a boat, you want good winds because guess what? It helps you move along a little faster. But when the winds become so fierce and so strong, they cause high waves and that can cause the boat to tip over. Or in this case, where the waves were causing the boat to fill with water. So they began to panic. They began to, to get upset. And they began uh, to think, what is going to happen in the midst of this? You know, isn't that just like us? We face adversity in life and we find ourselves in situations that start out uh, calm. It start out, everything is fine. It seems like it's just going to be real easy to get to the other side of whatever situation that we're in. But in the midst of that, something happens, something comes up, a strange or a strong wind comes, blows into our circumstances, and it causes us to begin to have doubt and fear. Now, one good thing about this situation is, and they probably even wasn't realizing uh, at the time, but Jesus already had everything under control, but they were scared. Can you imagine them thinking uh, to themselves, What's going to happen to us? You know, how are we going to make it? Is this my last voyage, you know, in a boat? Thinking about their families and, and their, their loved ones, maybe that they had left behind. And some of them probably even thinking, why did I get on this boat in the first place? Or and we may be thinking some of the similar things. Why did we even start this journey? Sometimes journeys God calls us into began calm, but along the way, things happen. But one of the things that we need to understand, and just like they're going to find out in the story, is what happens. Jesus is still with them on the boat. They come to Jesus. They wake him up out of his sleep because they were afraid. They were scared that they were going to perish. And they wake Jesus up in the, in, in, out of his sleep. Now, have you ever been awoken out of your sleep? It's not always a pleasant thing. And, and usually... It's those good sleeps that you get woken out of, you know, those ones that you're really having a good rest from. But Jesus is woken up out of, the, out of his sleep. Now, one of the things uh, that Jesus does when he gets up out of his sleep, you know, um, I can hear them saying, you need to wake up, Jesus. Don't you know that we're drowning? Don't you know that, that we're going through here? You know, and Jesus gets up and he awakes and he rebukes the wind. And then he tells the waves to be still. The wind ceases. The waves calm. And then he says to them, are you afraid? 
I know what, what I would say. I would say, yeah, Jesus, I'm afraid because I, I don't think that we're going to make it to the other side because the boat is filling with water and we're about to sink. And I would be saying, I want to make it to the other side. I want to make it to the other side. I want to touch the dry ground. And some would probably say, not only do I want to get to the other side, but I think this might be my last boat ride. God requires us sometimes to go through obstacles and things in our life to get to the other side. Jesus was with them, but yet still they were scared and they were afraid. Not only does Jesus, you know, uh, began to ask them, were they afraid? But Jesus began to ask them um, a poignant question. You know, one that I think sometimes that we often uh, leave out, you know, and even when we're going through a tough time, even when we're going through hardships, and even when we're going through life, sometimes we need to stop and ask ourselves the same question that Jesus began to ask them. How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you have no faith? After I've been telling you and talking to you about faith, after I've been telling you about even the smallest measure of faith can be strong enough to get you through whatever you're going through. But yet here they are and their faith is tested in this situation because they just want to get to the other side. I can only imagine what happened when they began to hear Jesus ask that question. They probably took a moment to pause and to really think about what happened because they began to say things like, do you believe, can you, who is this man that he can stop the wind and the waves? Who is he? Brothers and sisters, faith starts out small, but faith is something that we have to build upon. If we ever want to get to the other side of whatever we're going through, the current crisis in, in, in America and all over the world that's going on with the coronavirus, we want to get to the other side. But along the way, there are obstacles. Along the way, there are things that cause us to pause and to rethink. But I'm here to tell you today that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Jesus was in the boat. He had everything under control. But he asked him, where about your faith? Where is your faith? And sometimes we have to admit our faith ain't where it should be. But as believers, our faith should grow. Our faith should be able to grow. Not only should our faith be growing, but in the worst times that we face in our, in our life, it's what helps to strengthen our faith. And I'm sure that there are some of you today that have been through something that has helped you to strengthen your faith in the Lord. You've been through crisis. People have battled cancer. People have, have, have lost loved ones. People have lost jobs and all kinds of experiences happen. And yet and still, they made it through to the other side. Our faith will be tested along the way. But we have to remember, just like in the story, Jesus is still with us. And he promised that he will never leave, nor will he forsake us. They made it to the other side. Jesus had calmed the wind. Jesus had calmed the waves and they made it to the other side. But once they got to the other side, when they got out of the boat, here it is a man was running around in the tombs that Jesus encountered. Our faith will continually be tested. We come in and out of storms in our life. But through the storm, the Lord wants to know how you're going to hold up and will you remember that I am with you? Will your faith be strong enough so that you can stand the test of time? I believe our faith is strong. 
I believe our faith is strong, not only as a church, but I believe our faith is strong as a nation and as a world. God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And no matter what you are going through, God will help you to overcome it and God will get you to the other side. You could have a health issue. You could have a loved one that's sick. You could have problems in your marriage, in your relationship with your parents, or siblings could have issues going on. Whatever, you can have situations on the job, having a job, not having a job. That could be the storm that you're going through right now. But trust and believe that the Lord will enable you to make it through to the other side. We're grateful and thankful because this story reminds us of the fact that God will not only get in the boat with us, but he'll stay with us through the storm and then he'll be with us when we get to the other side of whatever situation that we're going through. Now, my brother and sisters, as you listen to this message today, God could have been speaking to your heart. And if you've never given your life to Christ, what a great opportunity to do so now. If you would just pray and ask the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, here I am standing in the need of salvation. Come into my life. Save me right where I am, even in the con situations and conditions that I'm in, in the midst of the storm. I surrender my life to you and I accept you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, my brothers and sisters, um, we'll have the number and contact information on the screen. You can give us a call. Uh, you can email us or whatever, you know, form of communication you want to send us. We'll be happy to pray with you and to encourage you. Uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're looking for a church home, amen, please give us a call and uh, give us the opportunity to share with you and to be there with you, to pray with you, and to be able to assist you in whatever you're going through in times like these. We thank you again for joining us this Sunday. And may God continue to be with you. May God continue to bless and keep you. And may God continually be with you in your circumstances so that you can get to the other side. In Jesus' name.